going to take a look at the stock of the day. Now today it's Avita Medical and Avita Medical today announced FDA approval of resale for the treatment of full thickness skin defects. Avita Medical CEO Jim Corbett calls it an inflection point for the company. The sort of things it can now treat include wound injuries and treatment after skin cancers have been removed. Now since that announcement the company's share price has gone up by 3.16%. Look this is huge news for Avita. Mark what are your thoughts on this stock? A buy, hold or a sell? Uh, I certainly like the space. It's pretty similar to, um, there's another one in the space, Polynovo, which we, uh, we're quite a fan of. Um, and just from the, uh, on the basis that uh, I've got a couple of surgeon clients who are pretty big fans of uh, Polynovo in particular. So we, we've tended to be a little bit more active in that. It's quite volatile, um, like, um, like Avita is as well. But the, um, they're both, uh, both companies are sort of going towards that soft tissue market because the addressable market is, is about five times larger, essentially. So they, I think they're both they're pretty similar but different products. But the spray on skin, obviously, with the burns victim um, treatments is, uh, is obviously is a much smaller addressable market. But moving to these soft tissue, they're... Um, you know, we, you go from you know three hundred odd surgeons being your your, uh, your addressable market to two thousand. Um, you know, in, well, particularly in Australia, and and obviously that means you get economies of scale with your yep. sales team, etc. So, um, so it's a really positive thing. Um, one thing I would say, like it had a really large spike. Um, I think from about three dollars forty up to around this four dollars eighty mark um, in the last sort of couple of weeks. So, but sort of, I guess. It, it, like the mining, the miners, they, you find a great resource, but then obviously you've, you've then got to hire people, build a, you know, you know, build a mine and things like that. So I'd be a little bit wary of it coming back off just because we probably had the, um, the it's been well telegraphed. We've had the um, euphoria about the announcement, but I would say, you know, they, they will probably lag or fall back to the pack a little bit as, you know, the, the revenue would disappoint in the next couple of reporting uh, quarters. Um, but I think long term, you probably want to be buying on a dip on this one um, overall. Same with Polynovo. Um, they, had record, they had record sales yesterday, um, or sorry, two days ago of seven million and a quarter. Um, and I think you know, they were bragging about five million at the start of this financial year. So they're, and they're expanding into Asia and into Europe. Uh, these guys will probably follow a fairly similar pattern. Um, and both have got pretty decent management teams as well. So look, either or, or, or both, to be honest, um, I think they're, uh, you know, they've got high prospects. And even in a recessionary um, style uh, market environment, um, biotechs that are about to go cash flow positive or that, you know, that are, do actually do really well as defensive. Um, so they're probably, yeah, they're probably two fairly all weather picks as well, but, um, but you know, and they will just gradually improve over the next year or so. Uh, Claude, do you agree with Mark's comments? I'm probably a little bit more positive on Avita than Mark is. I think that uh, Polynova is probably the product that is talked of a little bit better and maybe growing faster, a little bit of a better track record there. So no argument on that aspect of yep. what Mark was saying. But I do think that this uh, you know, FDA approval, this is going to allow that growth runway that Avita is on to sort of keep going. So they'll have to deliver on that, of course, and there is the room for disappointment. Uh, they have, I think, a bit over 70 million US in cash at the moment, and uh, th they're still cash flow negative. So I think a net loss of 9 million in the last quarter. So I see Avita as a little bit risky because, uh, as Mark was saying, you know, the biotechs that are cash flow positive or about to be can be safer, but mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think these guys are quite there yet. So for, for me, on a fundamental basis, it's a little bit too early. But if you were, if you wanted to be like a bit more aggressive, uh, and take a little bit more risk on that. I do actually think this is one that will make it in the end. Mm. Uh, so I would probably, I'm kind of positive on it, but at the same time, there's a problem of time frames because in the, you know, at the moment we're still in an environment where inflation's running hot and which means that people are constantly increasing their targets for where they think interest rates will be. And that generally has a negative effect on the kind of companies that aren't yet profitable and, and they're priced mm. for a lot of growth. So. That's a bit of a headwind for these guys. In the long term, if we look out five years, I would be surprised if the share price is not higher than it is today, but it just could be a volatile, bumpy ride. So maybe a buy? A, a speculative buy for okay. the long term at, is, the, is what I'd give it, basically. <laughs> okay, I'll put that down. <laughs> yeah. So you both sort of in agree. Well, I don't own it myself for the reasons that I just said, that I think it's still a bumpy road. Yeah. And you know, for my own personal portfolio, I would definitely keep that skewed towards profitable 
companies yeah. versus unprofitable companies. Okay, great. Well, that was our stock of a day. Let's get right into 